Hello everybody and welcome to this TrainSim TV video, this is Mark. Today we're going to take in a simple run from Stockton to Darlington on the DP simulation North East to England route. The scenario is one by uh, Average TD and it's available on the third party area of the Vulcan Productions website. It's part of a pack that is done based on the North East England route. I think there's five hours of scenarios in there. Um, and this is featuring the Armstrong Powerhouse Class 156. Uh, actually my first time doing a video of it, I have driven it quite a bit, but uh, my first time doing a video of it, uh, fantastic unit. Um, but yeah, we're at uh, Stockton, we need to get the unit set up and get the doors open. We're calling everywhere except Teesville Airport, I believe, on this service. Um, it's around a 25 minute journey, pretty simple little run. Just so you get a, a little look at the uh, 156 and also this uh, awesome route from DPS. So I've already got the uh, market master key and everything so I'm just going to put the instrument lights on, tail light on, headlight into the day position and then the marker light also needs to be turned on. So that's set the front of the unit up, we've got the DRA, uh, DRA on at the moment. And the last thing we need to do is set up the GSMR. So I press the register button, now we're pressing in the head code of the train, which is 2 Delta 1 1. Not sure what the signal number is. The uh, signal is 904. Press tick. And that will register as 2, two, two Delta 11, signal 904. It's now registered. So we're ready to go. Just need to open the doors. Do off in about half a minute. As we're going along, I will read a bit about the AP156 and stuff. I know there's all, you know, a lot of other videos and stuff out there already. So I'm not going to go too over the top because I know that a lot of it is already known anyway. But uh, for those that don't, I will try and uh, help out. In terms of this uh, section of the route, it's fairly simple section to track railway for the most part located just north of Middlesbrough we're heading from here at Stockton on the uh, far right and we're going to be heading along this line to the junction at Eagles Cliff now we'll then be heading across to Darlington which is over here we now have the right away from Darlington from Stockton sorry and our eventual destination will be Darlington some wheel slip it is autumn so it's a case of trying to control the uh, power there that we're putting down so they're not slipping all the time I put it straight into notch 7 then and obviously slipped pretty much straight away It seems as if it is now going to finally take uh, notch 7 there as we head away from Stockton. Bit of Z fighting going on there. But overall, it's a, a great unit. I certainly enjoy driving it. Over here, you have the site of Stockton Thompson Scrapyard. And heading in the other direction there, Grand Central is just T to Sunderland. Not sure exactly when the scenario is based actually. Uh, I guess it's before the HSTs were taken off completely. So the line here to the left that we're approaching, uh, if we were going to Middlesbrough we would take the route that way. This route is eventually, I understand, going to extend round towards uh, Middlesbrough. And I know Darren has already worked on it. Um, the section past T's yard and stuff. So that'll be featuring, it's already featured in some of Tom's videos on this channel. So 
So we're now coming towards the 60 mile hour limit. In terms of this route in real life, it is of course the Stockton and Darlington Railway. Was the world's first public railway to use steam locomotives, uh, I assume instead of uh, horse traction. It is uh, very much famous for that fact. And the railway itself opened in September, 19, in September 1825. And uh, eventually also obviously reached Middlesbrough. Eventually taken over by the North Eastern Railway Company and obviously beyond that the LNR uh, to grouping in 1923 before they came a part of the British Railways North Eastern Region and latterly Eastern Region. And services these days in this area are operated by Northern but Transpennine also runs services to um, Middlesbrough whilst Grand Central operate the services to Sunderland and have done since around 2007. We're now preparing to arrive at Eagles Cliff. Hopefully we'll get no wheel slip as we're arriving here. Worth noting we've got the feather at the signal ahead. This is for the junction at Eagles Cliff where we'll be turning towards Darlington. If we were heading straight on here we'd be heading towards North Allerton. From North Allerton you join the East Coast Main Line. Straight down to York. This route does include the route down to York as far as York and it also includes up to Darlington on the East Coast as well. We rejoin the East Coast Main Line when we get to, Dar uh, to Darlington. Just making a very cautious approach. Adhesion is quite poor, as we saw leaving Stockton. As we once we've left here, I'll talk a bit more about the pack, uh, the 156 pack. So I'm making the 30 mile an hour crossover. Next stop, Allen's West, it's only another half a mile. So the line we just left, as I said, heads across towards North Allerton. We're heading across towards Darlington now, via Allen's West. The line goes down towards North Allerton, where it joins the East Coast. And then in this route, as I said, you get the full run to York as well. Gradient still on this line fairly easy, but one in 177 now, which is probably about as steep as it gets really. It's a pretty flat line area of land, it's the Tees Valley. Now we're arriving into Allen's West Station.
An interesting history behind the station at Arlen's West uh, was opened during the Second World War. It was actually opened as an unadvertised station. And it was used to um, serve a Royal Navy stores depot, which was nearby. Uh, the station then passed on to the eastern region of British Railways on nationalisation in 1948. Uh, and actually became an advertised public station. It didn't actually become a proper station until 1971, when there was a new housing estate, which I guess is the one just over there, was built. So our next stop now, Dinsdale, in about four and a half miles. I believe the, Nor the Navy Steel's uh, former Stores Depot is down here somewhere on the right. So now we're on level track. Roughly two trains an hour on this uh, service in real life. Each direction you get the uh, you get also ones extended to Bishop Auckland and you get to Middlesbrough in the eastbound direction. I think there's also a service that goes to Hartlepool, uh, maybe on a weekend or something like that. So in terms of features on the AP156, starting from the top of the manual, you get three cab variants, you get the original cab variant, you get the original with GSMR train effects and the new AWS uh, reset button, and you also get a third one, we are in the second one that I just mentioned I believe, and the second one is modern, uh, the third one is modern with new style buttons, DRA and proving lights. As I said, we're in the second of those. So we've got train effects, but we haven't got the new buttons. We've still got the original style buttons included in here. Something that I really like about this pack. Passenger views. So as with most packs, you'll only get the one passenger view. This one's gone a long way beyond that. You actually get two styles of seating so you get two main variants of passenger room you get the as built with Ashbourne seats and the second one with the newer Chapman seats so we've got the newer Chapman seats here as pictured you get 12 different seat mockets which are automatically applied to their relevant liveries so we've got the one seen on the northern livery here now I know people on some pages and some forums and stuff have been complaining that they don't know the exact right maquettes or the seat types my personal view on that is basically that in the past we'd have always got one or two max, maybe packs and reviews at max. You know, I think if you get even more than three, you'd be really happy with that. Um, my view on it is, it is we've got 12 there. I'm not that obsessed about the accuracy. I like I like it to be a broad, the accurate sort of feel to it. I'm not too upset if it's not the exact replica. Obviously, if it's miles off, then yeah, don't include it, sort of thing. But um, I'm personally happy with what we've got with this. So, this is the Tees Valley Airport station. Teesside Airport station. Famously one of Britain's least used stations. It was actually the least used station in Britain in 2013-14. He had just eight recorded um, passengers, which is just like ridiculous. It's one train a week on a Sunday, which calls at 14.56. They actually, 
only run one service from Hartlepool to Darlington in the westbound direction. The service in the eastbound direction doesn't run at all because of the concerns over the safety of the weak footbridge. Which just seems crazy. I mean, they might as well close it, obviously. It's the parliamentary service thing. But it just seems completely pointless. I think at some point, surely common sense has to intervene. But uh, obviously not. So we're now arriving into Dinsdale Station. Got some milk bottles floating about on here. I thought I had everything installed for this route, but I seem to be having some sort of signage farce going on. Uh, it could be that I didn't install the signage pack that Darren did for the route. He actually did some signs for the route that uh, modify it, and I'm guessing that's probably what I'm missing. This is Dinsdale Station. One thing that's uh, a little bit of a downer with this pack, very, very minor point, like really minor point, but the fact that Darlington is missing from the destinations on the northern units. This is a bit of an own goal, but uh, one of those things, I suppose. Can't have every destination, but uh, you would have thought a major station like Darlington could have made its way on there. I know there seems to be some sort of limit to how many you can have on there. I know on the regional railways once Bristol was also missing and the units ran down there for a time when they were first built. Uh, that was also I know, noted. Again, it's not something that massively bothers me, but it's uh, it's a tiny thing really, but it's, it's still uh, something that would have been nice to have had. Overall, I'm, lo I'm loving the pack. I mean, I said I've already driven it quite a lot, so... Really enjoying the sounds and everything. I love the track joint sounds. Driven one of these over the West Highland line of the game and it's a really good experience. I enjoyed it. You can actually turn on the train lights and turn them on and off and stuff like that in here. Um, there is that clipping issue that I have seen a few times now but it is what it is. Obviously the drawback when you're putting the train lights on and off is that the bulbs don't actually go off, but that's a limitation of train time as I understand. You can either have them on or off and obviously you wouldn't want them off, uh, you know, you physically wouldn't want them off during the night because then you wouldn't be able to see anything really, it wouldn't look right. So now only three miles from Darlington. This route again it is available from DP Simulations, it'll be linked in the description. So we're getting ready to slow down, you've got a 40 mile an hour limit coming up and then it goes back to 60 for like a quarter of a mile. Then a 35 mile limit and then 30. Uh, and then soon after that we get into Darlington itself. Currently got a single yoga. So we'll get a red at the moment as it stands as a before Darlington station.
The other thing I love about the passenger views on this unit is you get one, two, three separate passenger, then you get another two on this side, and you actually also get a back seat as well. That's just really cool. Obviously open the windows as well if you want to. And when you do you get the outside sounds as well. Bit of a blind spot here, can't actually see the signal. Got a yellow signal now for platform three at Darlington. Approach control there, I suspect, which uh, would have changed when we went over the AWS ramp. So this is where we join the East Coast Main Line. Interesting little bottleneck there, you got a little bit of single track rather than a double track junction. Not the busiest line in the world though, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, the Middlesbrough line. Got one of Fuller Simulations Class 185s there. Departing on transparent service. She's in the train onto the buffers. Well, thank you for watching this video, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed that little. Uh, small video. I wanted to do something a bit different from the developer videos and we've not driven anybody else's scenarios for a while so I think it's only fair that we give somebody else a, a, a show in on the channel rather our own content or people's uh, content that we regularly show. So just wanted to do that for you. I'm going to try and do a bit more of this sort of thing if I can. And got some other cool ideas that I have uh, planned as well that just require a bit more editing. Uh, again thank you for watching guys. Please do like, subscribe, comment. Uh, we really appreciate your support. Uh, we recently passed 1,000 subscribers, which, uh, is, to be honest, is something that we expected to do, but we didn't actually expect to do it quite as quickly as we've done it. Uh, and we really appreciate your support for that. It's, it's really kind of you all to be supporting us. Uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for your uh, attention. I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Don't forget, check out Tom on Twitch. He's usually on uh, Twitch at Train City www.twitch.tv forward slash TV underscore Tom. Usually live half seven on a Wednesday and Friday evening, and that is UK time. And thanks for watching, guys. See you later.